I'm Sarah Buds. What makes me queer is how I live my life, how I have sex, how I think about people <laughs> and their sex that they're having. I seem to always think about what people look like when they have sex and apparently that's kind of a queer thing to do. <laughs> uh, I, I identify as queer so to me what makes me queer is that I'm just not your average kind of gal. There's always, you know, there's always more than meets the eye. I'm never it's never what you think it looks like. I'm never what you think I would be based on how I look. And I like, I like that. I like playing with people and making people uncomfortable. Um, also, also, my name is Sarah. People don't think um, I would be named Sarah. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's just the beginning of my ultra queerness. I also identify as a switch and kinky and poly and um, let's see, definitely, definitely a top, a more top leaning switch. <sighs> Obviously, I am a black woman, and well, I identify as woman. I, I definitely own and embrace that, and. Um, I like cats. That's definitely a part of who I am. Um, I recently realized that I was a cat, or I am a cat. My partner is like, duh. <laughs> but uh, I just started crocheting, and I ordered some yarn, and I was so excited about this box of yarn coming. And um, I kind of stopped and laughed at myself, and I'm like, only a cat would be excited about a box of yarn. <laughs> I'm also International Miss Leather 2011. Um, basically, I like to tell people I'm the prom queen. I won prom queen of Leather High School. And um, this past year has been just a whirlwind of traveling and teaching and fucking, of course, that's very important. Because International Miss Leather is a player's title. Um, uh, there's been a lot of educators. We also do that. But, you know, first and foremost, we're, we're players. And, you know, we let people know what we do <laughs> anywhere. Um, if someone says it's okay, that's when we can do it. Um, funny, funny Imsel story. I was at Folsom Street last year for the big Folsom Street thing. And, um, you know, thousands and thousands of people and leather people. And um, I'm supposed to be presenting at the women's space called Venus's Playground. And um, I wasn't, so, you know, I had all my stuff ready to do this demo for people. And I get there and then they tell me what the rules of the space are. And it basically was like, no, no blood play, no piss play, no breath play. And I'm kind of like, so what do you want me to do? Play patty cake? Like, what? <laughs> it's, like I, it's like I smuggled my whole med kit over there and I was all ready to poke some holes in some people. Um, but, you know, I ended up not doing that. But for Venus's playground. But I ended up having an awesome scene later at the Citadel with all my needles. So I didn't, I didn't you know, smuggle them in vain per se, they definitely were used. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of teaching. I have a handful of classes that I offer, but the most popular class this year is the Revolution Will Be Kinky, and it's about being young and in the scene, and also for new people. Um, and it's basically, half of the class is don't be an asshole, <laughs> and um, the other class is just the other half of it is like, you know, being open and um, asking for consent and permission, it, you know, just getting comfortable with doing that, being comfortable with taking care of yourself, being comfortable with saying what you want and what you need. Um, just making sure, you know, everybody leaves every situation, you know, fine. Um, 
Um, I know um, I have a lot of people who go to Burning Man and that one of their mottos is leaving the campsite better than you found it. And I, I believe in that. I do that with people. I do that with all nouns. People's places and things, I like to leave it better than I found it. Uh, just as a part of being a responsible person and, and just, you know, uh, a com like an active community member. I think, you know, in the queer community and in the leather community, we talk a lot about drama <laughs> and there's a lot of drama, but we never really talk too much about how to, you know, mitigate the drama or dissipate the drama or how to avoid it all together. And sometimes that means being responsible for yourself. And, um, you know, I, mo I like modeling that, especially when I'm sashed up or I'm wearing my vest. That's, that's important. <laughs> so, um, I mentioned leather, the leather community, being a leather person, um, and I will explain to you what that is. Um, basically, the history of leather started in San Francisco after World War II, and gay guys were bikers and they got together and they fucked and there was a lot of SM involved and protocol and you know all this mystery and history of the gay leather man um so you know sure I know I know what that history is you could read that history but you know I like to think of leather as um it's a lot of things it's your it's community it's it's in your heart it's um how you fuck or how you like to fuck it's what turns you on um as a kid i always loved the smell of leather it was always something that i liked i liked wearing it i liked watching people wear it i liked how it smelled um i'd mess around with my dad's shoe polish i'd get in trouble um, but it's also about people looking out for each other it's about um you know connections and power exchange and fucking <laughs> some people will say it's about protocol and other things that don't involve sex <laughs> but i like to think uh, something that it's it's like a life that you can step in that's all about sexy times and things that turn you on ultimately i mean you know my girl ties my shoes sure i might not have a boner when she's doing that but I get to look down her shirt and a lot of times if she's tying on my shoes that means I'm wearing shoes that I wear when we go somewhere where there might be play or it might be like a leather event or a convention. Um, so it kind of sort of starts like the sexy time. Like this is the period of the sexy time when I had these shoes on. Um, and you know that's a way that we incorporate leather and our dynamic into our daily lives or that's one thing that we do um leather is also about in um it's also about integrity leather is about integrity and honor and you know just the the higher level of play that we engage in and the more sort of edgy things that are involved requires a higher level of awareness of yourself and a higher level of communication and um you know being a grown-up <laughs> and um to me that's really important um even as it like sure i'm really i'm so really young like i'm i'm, I'm a young person in the community and it's nice to sort of be in a space of grown-ups acting like grown-ups it's like sure people are so silly and stuff but at the end of the day you know red means stop no can mean no but the thing is it's based on the whatever relationship or whatever is going on between the people involved and you know you're putting a lot of you're putting a lot at risk and you're putting a lot of trust into someone as well as you have to be trustworthy and um to me that's a very important thing about being 
a leather person being in the leather community that we don't talk about as much and it's probably taken for granted as well That's what turns me on so many things um turn-ons are definitely self-confidence uh, shoe any sort of fancy footwear um so you know boots heels a pedicure um it's really really nice i like i like boobs i like um you know women shaped like women so you know tits and ass and hips are awesome to me um i like men built like you know male bodied people actually no male identified people i like them built kind of like linebackers like stocky and um hardy and definitely somebody a type of person where you know they could definitely handle hanging out with me you know I'm not I'm not a small girl at all um, other turn-ons you know being queer is a turn-on a gender queer person is a turn-on fucking with gender is a turn-on um, sex is a turn-on and and also you know seeing another person have a great time is is a huge turn on for me i think that was definitely one of the reasons why i you know i'm here and i'm doing these things because i really enjoy showing people a good time whether it's it's with my body or you know i'm teaching or you know i'm playing music and um those you know watching somebody's face watching somebody make a face that they haven't made is a real turn on for me too piercing play it's definitely an interesting thing it was something that when i first found out about it um i was like i'm never gonna do that i'm never gonna do piercing play that's just what crazy bored white people do why would we do that as i'm talking to my partner um, and you know, but obviously I'm still really interested in it. Uh, and it was, it was always something that was really, like, I was always curious about it. It was never enough to, it was never, I never got freaked out enough to not want to find out about it. Um, so, and also people made really pretty things. Um, I, I've seen a lot of pictures. FetLife is always a place that I go to when I want to find out about how something looks um, and or look for things to jerk off to. Um, but piercing, it's a lot of fun and it's definitely, it can be really intense. You're also playing with a lot of chemicals and endorphins and um, the first time I was really like in an official, official scene with someone um, I got this, I, I got into this amazing top space that I've never been in before and um, it was, it was so awesome <laughs> and um, I never thought I liked blood but then I smell it and it's, it's, it's hot to me and um, I feel like, I feel like um, it's definitely really primal, it definitely makes me feel like I'm a vampire sometimes.